Um, so I'm going to share my screen and um, yeah, we're aware of some limitations, so we might have other people sharing screens too. So just just tune in wherever you can. Um, so I'm going to share my screen now, and I'm going to come over to uh, this screen over here. Uh, if someone can give me a thumbs up in AMA chat, that would be great to just tell me that you can see it. Or Mark or uh, Matt, you can also tell me whether you can see it. We can see it. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for the thumbs up as well. Um, yeah, so we really wanted this to be um, a really lovely crux moment where we could tell you a little bit more about the world of fates, a little bit more about the products we're making and, you know, what things are in production. Um, but I think it's first really important to introduce, you know, who we are, what our vision is for this product, uh, and then very quickly move into the roadmap. Um, so firstly, I want to touch on world building. Um, you'll read on our website, you'll read across all of our products that we are a law first project. You know, we really see law being at the absolute core of everything we do. Um, we believe that world building uh, can be a medium in its own right. Um, and if you know anything about Tolkien or Michael Pondsmith and his cyberpunk universe that, you know, is used across, um, you know, Project Red and all of those projects, um, you know, you know that world building can stand alone in its own right as its own medium. And what this gives you is a kind of vehicle. It gives you a vehicle to deliver any kind of project you want, because once you've got the law and you've got the stories, you can use it as a blueprint to create films, TV, you know, anything that's within your imagination because you've got the foundation there. So when we started this company, we said we want to be world builders. We want to keep the law right at the heart of what we do because we believe that the biggest franchises are yet to come and the biggest franchises are going to have law right at the very heart of their IP. Um, and, you know, law, uh, we have pedigree in law. You know, we've spent a lot of time doing this professionally and also unprofessionally as well. Uh, and I thought it was a really good opportunity for us to actually talk about some years. Um, I'd love for Mark and Matt to chime in, but I'll start on the left-hand side of the screen here. Um, I've spent the last five years building a fantasy universe called Old Law. Um, and this was prior to, to Cauldron, prior to Fates. Um, you know, I was crafting this fantasy universe and I created all of this content. I still create content on the weekends to this day. Um, Mark, I'd love you to jump in and talk about Evil a little bit. Yeah, so similar to um, Fox, I think over the years, you know, I, I spoke last time about having a job, you know, and stuff. And then world building was a love and a thing that Fox certainly did in the outside of work as, and toiling away. And um, Evil is the same. I, I started writing Evil maybe five years ago uh, i really wrote down the first notes for it tried uh, a few times to write the the science fiction book that it was um over a couple of years and actually fox was one of the first people to review it and and was very very good at reviewing it because he was very brutal and told me some truths about it that i needed to hear um and so anyway i met a wonderful uh, writer called kelly who's now actually on our team as our kind of as our actual science fiction writer um, and she um, collaborated with me and we, we wrote this. Um, and so, yeah, cut long story short, I've written uh, this Evo um, first of a trilogy. And uh, one day you'll see it out there, probably um, uh, kind of early next year um, when it actually gets published. But yeah, it's kind of just shows that world building's in our heart. and absolutely love it. But anyway, o over to you, Matt, and talk about your kind of Comb Wars uh, and other kind of passions for world building seeds. Yeah, so um, Comb Wars was a, uh, a world and a, a video game that I built I out with my own. Oh, no, I, I can hear him. Can you? I can't hear him. Yeah, listen, I, I can hear you, Matt. I think everyone okay. give a thumbs up. You can hear Matt Hyde. Yeah, can, can they, you hear me? Yeah, I can hear people saying they can hear him. It's just Fox. Fox always, um, Fox always, Fox always blocks you out, Matt. This is it. He always switches off when I talk. Yeah, um, yeah. So Comb Wars was a, a I, I guess, a world and a, a story uh, kind of uh, worked on a few years ago, which then kind of we built out uh, in in my old studio. Uh, it became a video game prototype, and it was based on sort of ice cream turf wars, where uh, the idea was um, all ice creams and, and kind of softies and, and, and uh, sweets would come to life and, and battle for, for turf. Um, 
It was, yeah, it was a great project. We ended up sort of pivoting it um, in the end, um, which was a bit of a shame. But And then the, the game itself uh, kind of turned into this game called Drive-By that was released on the Nintendo Switch, but it was, um, yeah, I'd really like to one day get back to Cone Wars, but um, that's a bit of my sort of checkered history on that one. There you go. So back to you, Fox, if you couldn't hear Matt there. I can't hear Matt at all, so you're going to have to cue me in whenever I need to continue. <laughs> so brilliant. everyone else could hear Matt and they reckon that you've muted That's him me. somehow. I can't hear a single thing. Um, <laughs> brilliant. So um, with that context and talking about law, you know, uh, we wanted to build a world building based entertainment studio. Um, and the best way to really frame this in the eyes of the kind of audience is really by looking at some brands that already exist that are already starting to move into this kind of cadence themselves. Um, you know, the entertainment landscape is shifting away from standalone TV shows, games, books, as these kind of standalone elements towards creating kind of a culture around each of these brands. And we see this with Riot, you know, they created League and since then they've been lateralizing. They've been lateralizing across TV with Arcane. They've been lateralizing into music with KDA that has, you know, 510 million views and uh, 2 million monthly active, you know, listeners. Um, we see, we've seen the same with Harry Potter in the Wizarding World as well. And we see these franchises that are starting to lateralize across, you know, not just one medium, not just one TV show, but lots of different experiences. And when we started Cauldron, we said, why don't we be multi-channel from day one? Why, for, why, why don't we create the culture from day one? Why don't we, you know, create games as well as films, as well as TV, as well as all of these other mediums, because we have the muscle to do so. You know, we've we've created these kind of projects before, uh, and I think it's the right time uh, culturally as well. Um, so with Fates, and from this point on the presentation, you'll be very happy to hear uh, that most of all the work I'm about to show you is all ours from this point out. Um, you know, we wanted to be multi-channel from day one um, and broadly, and this is speaking very broadly here, you can channel each of the things we're doing into one of four categories. Um, community, that's everyone here on this call. And with Web3, community is there from day one. They build the world with you. They build the law with you. They pull the world and its law and it's all of its connections with you. Um, community is absolutely at the heart of what we do and that will never change. Um, gaming, you know, we have a rich heritage in gaming. Uh, many of us have run game studios or been part of big game studios before. Um, you know, we really want to make gaming like one of the you know, core pieces of our universe. Um, and, it, you know, it, it, that might be a, a, a deep game or a light touch game like you played with the transceiver. Gaming will always be part of the kind of DNA of what we're producing here at, at uh, In Fates. Um, media. So viewership is changing. You know, we've seen the movement from people going from, uh, say, you know, uh, from, from book to series translation with, you know, the likes of The Witcher, all the way through to watching things like Love, Death, Robots and some of these, like, more anthology-based uh, TV shows. We really want to bring media into, you know, the storytelling kind of uh, roster of what we're going to offer with Fates. Uh, and we'll touch a little bit more about this uh, later. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's a really exciting vertical in what we're doing. Uh, and lastly, merchandising. You know, we really see merchandising as a groundbreaking way of connecting people to the physical world. You know, we, we all do have IRL lives, and I think it's really important to celebrate those because sometimes the times that I feel most connected to my community is when we're, like, wearing the same merch or when I see someone on the train who's wearing, like, an Attack on Titan patch or a Hunger Games pin. This is, these are the moments that happen in the, the real world that make me feel connected to, you know, my culture and, uh, and all the people uh, and, and games that I respect and love. So all together, all these things we call massively interconnected entertainment. And that is our vision for the future of gaming and, and beyond. Um, you know, we really see the future of uh, entertainment being this kind of coalescent thing that's constantly changing and constantly fetching new mediums to push storytelling to new limits. So 
just to reiterate, how do we become the next entertainment giant? We're going to create beautiful games. We're going to make films and books. We're going to do rich community experiences within our worlds. And this is going to be called Massively Interconnected Entertainment. And this will be the backbone of Fates. So um, the bit you've all been waiting for, the roadmap, uh, let's actually talk about what we're making, when it's coming, and talk about a little bit uh, of information about the Mint as well. So I'm going to start off with our Mint. Um, our Mint is going to be really different because our world is really different. You know, we really wanted our NFTs to have utility within the Fate story. Um, anyone who heard us in the first AMA will have heard us say, you know, we really see our franchise as being like this, you know, early days Star Wars where what we hope will happen in the future is that, you know, there's a cantina bar scene and people spot their own characters and those characters have their own backstories. You know, that's something we covered before. But to do this, we have to create the right framework for this universe to come to life. So our mint is going to be very different than others you've seen out there. Um, when you become a pilot in the Fates universe, you begin your story in the Fates universe. And as part of the uh, experience of minting, you will actually have three unique NFTs. Um, you will own a protagonist in the universe, you will own your own impact pod, and you will own a part of the Fate solar system. And this is going to become the groundwork for the way that we're going to build out this universe um, in the years to come. So let's take a look at some finer details here. Um, Mark, I'm actually going to pass over to you to talk through this. Yeah, sure. So like Fox says, the absolute you know, heart of what we are doing here is to have these three parts um, of our story, you know, the protagonist, the uh, part of the solar system and the EVAP pod. You need all three because, as you all know, you're uh, looking to be selected as pilots and to evacuate Earth. So in order to do that, well, you need to be a pilot. So you need to be a protagonist. You're going to need an EVAP pod to get off of Earth and get get to your destination. And your destination is a place in the solar system and you've looked on the website i'm sure and you can see uh you know where you're going to be settling um and so the mint uh itself we have a total supply of ten thousand, um but we're splitting it over four drops um and if you think about our story this makes sense um the braid has been uh, a, a disaster um for earth um you're all with ash uh, on the fates program in this underground uh facility that has been built you're here ash are doing their best to get as many evap pods um uh, made as possible but they, they can only bring them on um two and a half thousand at a time um so you can see here the first drop um is two and a half thousand pods um which you can become a pilot um, and get into and then go off to your destination um, and that will happen in q4 this year um, so right towards the end of this year um, ash will uh, evac um, two and a half thousand um, uh, off but then you can see um, the fates timeline below you can see that then we're going to do another three um, evacuations um, so the first one happens this year and then the second one um, is going to happen in Q1 next year. So, you know, um, you're looking at that Q1 being between January, February, March next year. We will evacuate another two and a half um, thousand of you. Um, but it will be very slightly different because obviously in our story, the braid is there. And so, you know, watch this space because uh, uh, I guarantee you, uh, Fox will, will not want to make that look the same as the first, um, first uh, evacuation. The story won't let us do that. And then you can see I'm, I'm going to not talk too much about um, uh, the middle bit, but you can see another evacuation is happening in Q3 next year. Um, and so in Q3 next year, which is, um, you know, you're looking around September uh, sort of time, uh, October time, um, you're going to have another evacuation. And then right at the end of next year, Ash have finally got their last 2,500, which means we get to our 10,000 um um supply um off now the beauty of this it means that if you do miss the um the drop in q4 this year you're going to want to train to be a pilot for the next drop or the next drop and the next drop okay um now i am not going to go into too much on the everything else in this slide because fox is going to go into it but you can see right in the middle there where fox is has got his um cursor um, this is a game that we are making, and 
we told you before that we came out of another company we've been building for for 12 months this game fox will show you is is is, is not something which we're starting it's in flight and it's it is very much in, in heavy development and it will come out um in the middle of next year um and then across the bottom um you can see that throughout the year we're an entertainment company so sure we're talking to you about uh, the separate um uh, mints that are happening but you just had the um the, the you just had the toy um to play with the transceiver before that some of you were lucky enough to make our uh, kind of secret launch event for friends and family and a, a few others and, and stuff um but you'll see their short film fox will talk about music an ep coming out more puzzles like the transceiver you'll see another short film you'll see codename novella there books um that kelly our writer is writing for you um and then you'll see more in real life events that's what we're telling you everything we're talking about there like fox said at the beginning is in flight is funded and we are producing as we speak which is why we're very happy to talk to you about it um so i'm not going to give away any more because fox is going to go into more detail i hope i did that justice fox yeah absolutely you did um so yeah the last thing i'm going to touch on as part of this slide is just you know be aware that when you're looking at our timeline, you're only really looking to the end of next year. And there is a lot happening. We are exceptionally busy all the time, but we also don't want to project too far into the future. And that's because we just want to stay true to making sure that the things we're telling you we're doing, we are actually doing, and they are in production. That's so important because there's been so many rugs, there's been so many projects that have let people down. We don't want to be one of them. And I just want to emphasize that at this point. So let's go into a few of these and actually take a look at them. Um, so uh, Project IRL or uh, Codename IRL um, is really about launch parties and community uh, events that are in person. Um, some of you in this community were lucky enough to join us for our first where we revealed the world of fates. Um, and you can see, you know, we, we produced posters, we, we, we booked a venue, like these things, this, this really happened and we were really, really excited to bring it um, to, to the community but importantly as well we're excited to continue bringing this to the community you know expect to see us doing interesting things at you know other events you know big uh, nft gatherings like we always want to have a presence at these events because it's important for us too um so that's codename irl we're always looking at making sure that we are bringing people together it's part of our community spirit it's part of the way you know that we want people to gather and talk about fates and be part of fates it's also having the opportunity to meet in real life and and and, uh, and bond um in person okay so i know a few of you guys have mentioned this already um but um codename div um is all around deepening fan connection to their divisions um, you guys did our personality test. Thank you so much for everyone for taking it and really representing them. Um, you know, we are so excited to continue bringing, uh, you know, law to continue bringing the divisions uh, to everyone. Um, we want to continue to create ways for people to advocate their divisions. Um, we are, this is already in flight. We are already working on ways to do this. Um, and if you don't believe us, uh, there's a quick shot I took today um, of some stuff that we're doing. Um, again, you know, looking at our background, I came from a branding background. I know packaging. I know how to get these things uh, done. Uh, so, uh, yeah, expect much in the near future. Uh, we're really excited to bring this to everyone. It's going to be a really, really cool project. And we really hope that people will start to rep their, their, their uh, divisions in, in the real world as well. Um, Codename WT. Um, now, this is all around, uh, you've played the transceiver, you've, you know, played these experiences. This exists as part of this ecosystem of web-based, you know, puzzles that will bring the community together to unlock secrets within the Fates universe. You've played the web toy, uh, the, the transceiver. Um, you know, it was such a, a great moment to see everyone interacting with that, but what we didn't tell you is actually that this isn't just a standalone thing that we're doing. It's part of an entire initiative to continue to deliver products and puzzles to this community. Um, we really see it as a really fun way of exploring the, uh, the fates law. Um, and uh, like I said, we've got a pipeline in place for this. We have, uh, you know, we, 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 this is all in active development. The second web toy or the second uh, community puzzle will be coming, um, you know, sometime uh, early next year, Q1, Q2. Um, so we're really excited to continue moving this product forward, 
continue to bring new puzzles to this space uh, and just continue to deliver in a way that makes the community come together and just, you know, try and find things. And we promise these puzzles are going to get harder and harder and harder. And what we're going to do is make you work harder and harder and work more and more together to solve them. So we're really excited to, to keep doing that. Codename EXO, um, I've redacted this, um, but this will be a really fun part that we've been working on um, that will be revealed very, very soon. I don't want to reveal too much about it now, um, but this is, you know, part of the kind of uh, Mint experience. Uh, we really want to, you know, completely foundationalize my, my, uh, ourselves at, around law. You know, law is at the heart of everything we do. We said that, we've said to ourselves from day one, if we're going to do a mint, if we're going to do all these things, uh, we need to make sure that they make sense within our universe and they feel as much part of the universe as any other part of the story that we would do. Um, so Codename XO, expect more soon. I'm not going to talk too much about it now, but it's, it's, it's a really exciting project and uh, I hope you're all going to enjoy it. Project SF. Um, We've all watched uh, Love Death Robots. Um, we, I see a lot of other products in this space talking about creating short films, but what's really important is actually getting moving on it. Um, short films are not easy to produce. They're not, in, they're not inexpensive to produce. And when we started talking about short films, you know, myself, Mark, Matt, the founders, we got together and we said, we just need to start moving with this. You know, this is, a really important way of bringing the storytelling of fates and all of those you know other stories together that, that weave this web of this world we're making um codename sf is a short film product it's a short film vertical that we're going to continue working on it's already in production in fact it's so far along in production that it's coming between at the end of this year or the beginning of next year but i'm i'm kind of thinking that it's more towards the end of this year Again, uh, we, you know, if it needs a little bit of extra polish, we'll, we'll, we'll give it that. Um, but this is already in production. I, I, I sit down with the team every Tuesday and we go through the short film. The directors behind the short film um, are exceptional. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the directors is one of my sort of like uh, my heroes. Uh, and when I found out I was going to be working with him, I was literally squealing. So I was like, yes, OK, this is exactly the quality level that we wanted to bring. Um, I'm so excited for the short films product. I think it's going to be really, really cool. I don't want to oversell it. Short films are expensive to produce. They're difficult. You need to do lots and lots of work beforehand. You have to do previs. You know, all of these things come together. They're very difficult to do. So don't expect over the world. Our first short film is going to be under four minutes, but it's going to be really exceptional. And I think it's going to really blow your minds in terms of its storytelling, in terms of its uh, narrative, and in terms of its visual design. And it's called Baron. Uh, so here's the title cards. Uh, yeah, coming 2022, 2023. Uh, Want to be realistic? Uh, it's coming late, late 2022. Um, but yes, it is coming. So the next project I'm going to talk about is kind of a big one. Um, what you're seeing on the right hand side of the screen here is, as you can see, it's a prototype. We are physically playing with with, with this game, um, and this is Project AS2. Uh, AS2 is going to be a mobile game where your character is going to be a protagonist in our world. It's going to be narrative centric. Um, and uh, we're really excited to, to kind of bring this to, 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 to all of you because this game has had a lot of time and polish put into it. And I think what's really important is to demonstrate it working like here on the side, you can see these aren't final graphics. There's nothing here to really see that's going to be final. You know, we've all seen those GTA five leaks, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to go into those, but, what I can promise is that this is in active development. Uh, we're really excited for this to come mid next year. Uh, it's going to be really, really cool. Um, and it's going to be one of the first major games that we're going to release, release in this space. And um, Fox, I'll, I'll just jump in there just at this point, um, just, just to clear up some things that make us very, very different to most other projects out there, um, is we don't do a mint to get funding to fund things and, and say, this is what's coming. The reason why um, when Fox shows you the short film and it's being funded and every week Fox, you know, meets on the Tuesday, the reason why this game is already 12 months into its dev um, is because we are a funded company. So um, I, we spoke last time about our investment um, in, in this company. We've had $8 million to date. 
And so that's why um, things are, you know, very well developed. And we wouldn't want, we didn't want to launch the community um, until we were confident that a lot of these um, projects are in flight so that you can actually see them in the very near future rather than promising in, in two years time or so. So yeah, as Fox keeps going on, just bear that in mind. Um, we, we're, sometimes projects um, show things and say oh this is what we would like to build once we've done mint and we've got the funding we're different we're an 18 person team and we've we've been working on this all for a long time but anyway back over to you fox yeah that's a very very good point and um yeah no really appreciate pointing that out it's 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 very true um music uh or project mu um i'm sure you're realizing by now that i'm very lazy with my code names um we really want to bring music to the face universe you know being part of a community and being part of a culture means being connected to that community and that escapism or you know as much as you can i'm sure i'm not the only one who who uh, gets the train in the morning or moves or you know um, go, goes to see my family and I, I stick on a spotify playlist and i often put on something from my games um you know this is really important to us music is going to be really cool and uh we're really excited to be say that this project's being greenlit um, good thing with music is it's 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 fairly short turnaround. It's not like short films where it takes it takes months and months of previs. Um, you know, we're really talking about bringing this uh, to to you guys uh, very very soon, and uh, I think it's going to be a really important vertical. I actually think it's going to be one of the uh, the kind of up and comers because I think it's it's one of those things that it kind of it's part of your life music, and I think that being showing fates in in that way and through those channels is going to be a really exceptional part of what we offer. Um, and lastly, um, Project uh, North, or, uh, which is going to be uh, short novellas in the Fates, Fates universe. Um, I want to spend a little bit of time on this because I think it's really important to recognize that, like, you know, because we've been an established company for so long, um, we've made so many amazing connections with so many amazing people. And one of those people is Kelly. Um, Kelly's our writer. Um, she's exceptional at capturing uh, the human condition and talking uh, through a lens or, or writing through a lens in which you really make these characters believable and interesting and, you know, really creates very deep character arcs and great lore. Um, this is not just, you know, a, a, a book project we're going to push out. This is a, a book project we're going to put an immense amount of care into. Uh, and we are going to produce, um, you know, we're calling them novellas, short stories, however you want to phrase that. Uh, it's going to be a really, really cool part of our universe. And I think it's really going to expand on a lot of that kind of lore that we've started to talk about. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything, Mark, but but I'm just really excited about this as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think the thing is, is across all of these verticals, we're trying to you know really pull you into this into this world wherever you are you know like the music thing i love i love about that is you can wander around the real world and you can just be immersed in in that just like you are on film scores with these um novellas novellas are around you know 100 pages you know even shorter and and we plan to you know have a trilogy of these next year um and one day you know imagine you know there are nine of them um, out there and, and they're, they're, they're just going to be a wonderful um, representation of fates that you can just, you know, on a Sunday, just chill, uh, read um, and, you know, not have to be in the game or, or, or kind of thinking about that side. So I'm, I'm just really excited about these because it's just that real feeling of, of, um, of just immersing yourself really into the fate story. And uh, yeah, can't be excited enough about these actually in, in, in a fat box. That's it. That's it. And that brings me to the end. Uh, but also what comes after, you know, we I don't want to understate how massive our plans are for the future. You know, and we've communicated these plans internally. We've got roadmaps. We've got game design documents. We've got so much content that's about the future of this, this company and about the future of Fates. But like I said before, I think it's really important to reiterate that everything you've seen today, everything we've presented is in production. You know, we really want to be seen as a brand that's really delivering in this space by not over promising you know but my final words on this are that you know this world is just beginning i'm really excited for the community to be contributing to the law and be part of this universe uh and everything we've shown today is is really just the start um you know we're only looking uh, ahead a year and i'm already seeing so many amazing projects that uh that that i'm i'm really uh, excited about um 
So, um, yeah, thanks everyone. And uh, I'm going to stop presenting now. Um, and I guess what we'll do is we'll probably stay on the line um, and start answering some, um, some questions. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how the best to do this. Um, is there um, any kind of overseers, um, mods uh, in our team who've kind of picked any out? Don't worry if there's not. We can, we can just, um, I, I know the AMA chat's going, but just shout if any, any overseers or mods have got a few they want, want us to pick out first. Um, let's see here. I do have a question. Um, someone asked, what was most challenging about making the short film? Oh, over to you, Fox. Fox, I would say, I would just quickly jump in and say, choosing the script was hard. So I'd prime that bit with you first, and then, but over to you on the rest. Choosing the script was actually really hard, admittedly. Um, we received about four scripts um, from Kerry and Kelly. We sat down and we went through them all. And um, there was two really standout ones with two totally different levels of production. Um, one of them was a much more internet, intimate sport story. Uh, and one was uh, much more of a kind of wider, it had, a, it had a breadth to it that was really interesting. But actually, truth be told, I think the production level that would be needed to achieve it was, was exceptionally high. Um, we chose the intimate story, and I think it was the right choice. Um, it, it's, it's a really beautiful story. It's amazingly told. I think it really sheds a light on, on uh, you know, uh, the world of fates in, in so many interesting ways. Um, I think beyond that, I think that, um, you know, short film production, let alone animated short film production, exceptionally difficult to do. Massive, massive shout out to the team on our side who are, who are pulling this off. Um, there is so much consideration. There is so much work that goes into it. Um, and it's something that's surprised me a lot is just how much you know, production and thought goes into making sure that, you know, when you receive, um, you know, all the all, all the previs work and it's it's sketches. But what's important about it is that you're timing each the length of each scene so that the animators know how long a character walk cycle needs to be like these things are incredibly nuanced and actually really important. Um, so I think that's been the hardest thing. But I also think it's it's the most exciting thing because you get to see this thing coming to life uh, piece by piece um, in terms of production. We're just moving into uh, the next stage. Um, and uh, the next stage, um, basically, we've done all the rigging. We've done all the character work. Uh, we've done all of the modeling, like most of the modeling. Uh, the environments are, are pretty much there. Like, we're now moving into some, like, you know, basically the last stage, which is lighting and environment design. Um, so, yeah, really, really exciting. I can, um, I can see another question that I'll, I'll start off on as well. It's come up, like... Um... Do you have any idea how to involve, involve more people Web3 since you're building a mobile game? You may want to attract not only people aware of your NFTs. This is a, a brilliant question and it's been something that um, over, well, actually since we began in August last year when we, when we really went, look, you know, we feel like entertainment is uh, a new form is coming um, and people should really feel a sense of ownership over um, items and characters uh, in, in the entertainment. Last time we were talking about entertainment sometimes feels one way, you know, as someone makes it and then you consume it. Whereas what we want is we want to be in it, um, but not have to be in it in a kind of uh, 10 hours with a controller in your hand type in it, but in it because we own a character. And that, that's what Web3 gave us. But reaching out beyond that, of course, um, we absolutely need to do. And so when we talk about music, when we talk about um, the mobile game, the mobile game is going on the Apple App Store and, and, um, on, and, and it's going to be Android as well. Um, we have to reach out beyond Web3. Um, and we um, do things like the mobile game. You get an experience if you're a pilot and you connect your, your character to it and you're going towards your asteroid. But someone can also just play it for free. They get a much lighter experience, um, and it's like a simulation of of of, of that. Um, and you know, you get so much more as as a pilot um, who's been selected and and has gone out there. But we're we're kind of entertaining through music that will be accessible out there. You know, through Spotify, through everything, um, through novellas that people can just read. You know, and and. 
And, and so we're going to attract people to fates because they're going to love the world of fates. And then they'll go, I wish I was more of a part of it. Oh, my goodness, what's this? Oh, I can get a character. What's Web3? You know, um, Web3, we're in it. And, and it, it, it kind of feels like, oh, everyone should know about it. But as you will know, uh, it's just millions of people and it's not billions yet. You know, and, and so there's a long way to go. Um, but that is why entertainment is a beautiful thing to start with, because everybody, no matter how hard things are in the real world, we always turn to be entertained and to escape. Um, and so that's why we can reach out to Beyond Web3. Um, so I hope, hope that helps answer that particular question. Um, I don't know if you spotted other questions, Fox or Matt, or, or if um, Joy, you have any more. If I can throw in a few, I've spotted some, if that's all oh, right. Hi, hi. We have a bell. Yeah. We have a bell. Hello. She's arrived late, but she's arrived. <laughs> Just like in London. So um, I've seen a couple questions that I think are kind of fun, if that's okay, and some that are a little bit more serious. Um, so we've gotten one, we've gotten two that I think are interesting. People are trying to get some specifics about what's coming out. Paula wants to know if you've thought about publishing a book with the novels, like a physical book and an ebook. So I, uh, th this is a really interesting one. So because we've um, been around books, for a long time. Um, Kelly has been around books for decades and, and real books and is a ghost writer for some, uh, for some science fiction writers that she cannot name um, uh, that helps them. Um, so there is a sense of we know how to publish books. Um, but it's exciting, isn't it? Because in the NFT world, you can kind of have the NFT uh, as the book um, and then you could go down the road of forging it and turning it into a real book if you want to. Um, and so, you know, the books are in flight. You know, Kelly, uh, we met up with Kelly yesterday and she was talking about how far along she is with the first novella and, you know, the proofreading and all this sort of stuff. And, and um, we're not going to give it too much away uh, around the format of it, because I think Web3, it's exciting what you can do with Web3 um, with, with a book. Uh, and so um, I think it would be a shame just to make it physical um, straight away. I, I think I think the uh, the, the side of uh, hinting towards you around forging, I think, could be uh, could be a really exciting thing to do. Um, so I hope that helps a little bit there, Bill. Oh, I'm sure it does. Um, it's just exciting to know that there are so many possibilities, which I think is why um, Jam was asking a question about the music. Um, they wanted to know if there are any specific genres that you're planning to produce in, or if the community is going to have any kind of say in that process of production if they're going to have any kind of involvement fox so i think <laughs> that piggybacks on this quite well as well which was around you know um the idea of using the world uh, the law you know the world building channels uh, to populate the law of the universe um i think you know that is a really really well let's start with that for a start um yes you know of course we want um, our users to be inputting in the universe and actually I've been part of so many really amazing communities over the last you know 10-15 years um, in which I've contributed to other universes um, SCP Foundation as a classic um, I'm part of the world building uh, you know reddit uh, page and I've contributed uh, you know, so much there and I think that you know contribution to law is, is really really important um, and I think that fates is no different and we will absolutely be you know, working with the community to create stories in this world because it's the richness of the different types of backgrounds that people bring that make the stories unique. Um, I think that's why it's, a, you know, it's going to be a story-led universe. I think that's a really cool thing. And this, of course, extends to music. Um, to talk about the music side, um, I can talk a little bit about my creative um, kind of vision for it. Um, I think that would be helpful, um, which is that, Fates is an ever-evolving universe. It's always going to have its problems. It's always going to have things to do. It's always going to have narratives and narrative arcs. Um, as part of those are narrative arcs, I really want the music to be a reflection of those. Right now, in the world of Fates, people have just uh, survived a quite horrendous world event, and they're they're you know set their eyes on the stars to to leave Earth and to go out there. Um, I think it's a really you know amazing thing to use music as the vehicle for telling that story um and i think that you know 
that kind of daunting orchestral epic vibe that comes with that i think it's a really cool way to explore genres uh, as part of that um i think that yeah i think i think it's a really exciting thing um i think that um of course as we move forward with this project we really want people to be inputting onto um uh the you know into into you know the world we make so i think that as always we're always open to suggestions here um but yeah it's 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 great and it's um it's i'm really excited about it I can see a, um, a, a, a question on the stream that I'll quickly answer as well. Um, questions around, you know, utilities when you, when you get these, um, when, when you're a pilot and you get your pod and you get your character and you get your, your, um, your destination in the solar system. And um, just in case you arrived um, late, um, that's, what, that's what's so important to us is this, uh, the, the, the first evac is around um the story you know you are evacuating earth so we're going to get you on a pod um you are a person who needs to evacuate so you're a pilot and you're going to have a character nft um and then you need to go somewhere so we're going to actually send you to a destination out in the solar system so that's another nft so you have three nfts as a pilot to to to, to enter our so in terms of utility um just in case it hasn't kind of become clear um First of all, everything from, you know, the book to the short film, you know, you will get utility of always having premiere on that, you know, so we'll, we'll be making sure that you see things, you get things early because you're holders, right? That obviously makes sense. But as we want to reach out to wider masses, then they become available to, to the, you. And then there's a question on uh, from this, uh, you know, around the game side of things. Yes, of course, you know, the game is you connect your character to that game you know your your destination is then connected to that game um and so it's kind of like we said earlier when it comes to it the heart of it is ownership of a world and that world is fates and you're a part of that um and uh, that that means that when we're doing entertainment you're always you, what you hold is woven into everything out there and you can always point to that um, so I hope that helps answer that a little bit. I saw that question kind of um, flowing through the thread there. But I don't know if Bella or, or Draw, you've got any other questions that come through. Oh, I've got questions. I've got questions. Oh, nice. um, Darshan wants to know, and I think this is kind of a really interesting, um, I would say, cross-section of a lot of questions that I've seen. So hopefully this will sort of answer some of the other ones as well. So I might not be asking your question, but it's close enough. Um, Darshan is very curious to know your thoughts around the interoperable future of Web3 gaming, especially collaborating with other projects and building storylines in sync with them. Is that something that you're looking to do mid to long term? The, the, I'll let Fox and Matt talk about the interoperability side, um, but I'll just say one thing. I'm sure you've um, read up on it and everything else. Interoperability within games is really, really, really hard. <laughs> Anybody who says, oh, it'll, you know, it's easy. It's not to say it's not going to happen, right? It, it's very much, you know, kind of there's, when there's too much interest in something, these things do happen, but it's going to take a long time for interoperability to really um, come together. The technical challenges are immense. Um, and, and so I'll hand over to Fox and Matt to add any more on that. And then, you know, great question on the storytelling and, and kind of being woven there, but um, I answered the last one, and I've started answering this one, so I'll, I'll let some other voices um, uh, answer. I think the interoperability um, question um, is, it, it kind of harkens to, you know, what, I think there's a lot of questions in the Web3 space right now, um, especially around, you know, the mid to long term. And I think that broadly, these questions kind of sit in a pool of, what I've recognized is that the technologies are going to change and the ideologies are going to be here to stay. Um, with the technologies changing, anyone who's been part of any technology company, you know, ever, myself, Mark included, uh, over the last sort of like 10 years or so, know like just how layered technologies are. They're superseded, they're changed, they are iterated on, they are, um, you know, they are re-architected. Um, and I think that what's important to recognize about the interoperability side is that the that is a horizon that people want to move towards. And so long as there, are an there is an audience there that demands it, then people will be out there trying to solve it. Um, at the moment, I can't see a way in which that um, will happen in the short term. 
Um, but I've got high hopes for the mid to long term um, because I think that there's demand out there for it. And I think that people are trying to solve that technical issue. Um, in terms of what I think was more interesting about that question is that in, you know, almost like the idea of intertwined storylines. And I think that it's a really unique idea. And, you know, I've seen quite a lot of projects in this space that, where the collaborations are becoming more and more deep. They're becoming more and more meaningful and they're going beyond just um, quick collabs and more into, you know, long term partnerships in which law is integral to both worlds and there's shared law between them. I think that's a really cool thing. And I think that's something I'd really love to celebrate as being part of this community and part of Web3 in, 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 in general is the idea of creating this like slightly interwoven storyline where people are recognizing, hey, is that this asset from this other thing or is that something else? I think it's a really exciting thing to explore. You know, it's interesting you brought that up, Fox, because there was a question about what it was that inspired you to release this as an NFT in the first place. I'm just curious, like your thought process behind it, did that play any role in that decision? Yeah, I think that like when we when we started talking about the kind of product we wanted to make, there was no doubt in our minds that building a universe uh, is is not something that can be achieved by the team size that we are. It's a- achieved through community. And, you know, when you start talking about, you know, the idea of, I guess, the, the compound uh compound factor of having so many people contributing to law and being part of that you know universe I, I think that that's what we got most excited by and ownership was a byproduct of that um something we say often and i said it in the last ama and i'll say it again you know imagine if you know in the 1970s and someone started star wars and you know this culture was at the forefront of it um i think that would be such an exciting proposition to say hey i could own part of this universe and i think that right now is completely ripe for that um, experience. And that's why we moved into this space. Ownership is important. You know, the amount of hours I've sunk into games where, you know, I, I, I never saw anything from them. I never owned anything from them. I mean, I was part of some of the OG, you know, Haber Hotels and stuff like that, uh, Neopets and all those things. And God, I wish that I'd, I wish that those things existed now in this culture because this culture is so perpetuative in what it does that I think those brands would have become so massive and so beloved. Um, I think it's really, really cool. Yeah. And I think I'd, I'd add add to it as well that I think, um, I think there's a bit of a tiredness with entertainment and you feel it when you, you know, flick through Netflix or, uh, you, you kind of see the same formula happening, um, with the delivery of entertainment. And I think, we're we're quite unique, uh, and we we do like escapism to be varied. And I I think sometimes we're finding like entertainment is hard to find things that are varied. I think the beauty of Web three and the reason why it really kind of woke me up was you could just suddenly see my goodness, like Fox says, if you did own things in a world, it suddenly felt fresh, and it was like. Yeah, that's, that, you know, and, and so I, we could feel a sense of entertainment through fates, through a world that would suddenly feel, you know, so much different. And, and we've, we've um, humanity's loved that, you know, since the dawn of time, you know, when the, when cinema first came out, it was fresh, you know, and when suddenly you could get, you know, cinema quality through DVDs on your TV, it felt fresh. And, and, and we're always seeking that. And so Web3 is just another another way and so of course you know we wanted to do the latest way and and uh it excited us and if it excites the team then it's going to excite an audience um so yeah i hope that answers adds to a bit yeah um i think i think it does i think uh you all are creating such an incredibly elaborate world and making the concept of entertainment so different. And I feel like that's what a lot of people in the AMA chat are really resonating with is that there's so many different ways that you're going about telling the story. Um, and I, one of the questions that I did see come up was, was like the interactive nature of how it might work um, from their side of things, because they also are hoping to build a world with you. So, um, you know, with respect to the game and just um, especially as future drops come out and you, 
put so much on the roadmap. How much interaction will there be for people in the Fates world? Um, I'm happy to answer this one, Mark, if you're, if you're keen. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Cool. Um, so as you guys will get to know me, and you will get to know me very well, <laughs> I'm sure, um, you'll know how much of a love I have for Dungeons & Dragons. Um, I became a DM a few years ago. Um, and I actually wrote one of the first things we did when we started, um, you know, Cauldron and we started Fates was I wrote a white paper on why Dungeons and Dragons was such a good self-perpetuating story. And it was a phenomenon I kind of didn't quite coin, but was talking about being collective escapism. When you're sat in front of a TV playing a game, you, uh, you have a kind of one-to-one -one relationship with, with the game that you're playing. Whereas with um, something like Dungeons and Dragons, you're sat around a table and the dynamic of that story changes by people inputting. People come to the table and they say, hey, I'm going to go do this. And you change how the story comes to life via contribution. And I think that I can't tell you guys how much I want this to be part of the you know, formula for Fates. Um, collective storytelling is so at the heart of what we're doing. Um, I think in the more, you know, at least in the next year, you'll see that what we really want to do is we want to prove ourselves as a product company and we want to do, you know, we want to build games and we want to do all these things and we're going to deliver on all of those. But there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that our heart lies in this idea of collective storytelling, collective escapism. And we will continuously drive initiatives to make sure that people are inputting into the story of fates and they feel like they are heard and they feel like they're changing the story because that's when things really matter. Um, brilliant, brilliant moments in, in things like Eve uh, online where big wars took place that went down in Wikipedia history. I love moments like that. It's where the community really comes together and shapes and forges the kind of future of that universe. And we want to make opportunities for the audience here in Fates to be able to do that for, for, for our universe as well. Um, so yeah, long story short, collective storytelling, absolutely, we definitely want to, to, to uh, do this. Um, in the short term, mid term, what we're trying to you know, go out to market with is making sure that people understand that we are going to deliver in the space, we are going to make products. Okay. Did anybody else want to on the team want to jump in to that um, before I move on to the next question? No, I, I think it was um, you know it, it it just shows the heart around it, and and I think when you follow a passion and and something that you love like D and D, uh, it and then you build that DNA of D and D and D into a project like this, you you can feel it, and that that's what Fox is saying. You know, um, you're going to get to be a part of this, and and uh, it, it's it's is how you weave it in. I mean, I saw it even in the first 48 hours of Discord launching, and we were suddenly doing a little mission on the world building channel, and it was wonderful to see you participate on that. I mean, I shouted, "Hey, I need three scouts!" and then suddenly in the scouts channel three scouts reported for duty and i was like oh wow we're doing a text adventure you know um it, it's brilliant and uh watch this space because um you know you, as you participate as we you're writing your survivor logs on there uh you know uh, we, we will be we will be looking we're always looking and uh and you'll see things being woven in amazing i know that we did see a question it came up a few times um, so I do want to touch upon it since it does seem to be, um, what people are interested in. They're kind of curious about the revenue model, right? Because this is a VC funded project, which has been stated repeatedly. If you didn't know that, you know that now, if you already knew it, I'm sorry. Um, so it is a VC funded project, which is great because it's allowed the team to build, to focus on building. And that means building the, the world, building, you know, these amazing items on the roadmap and also building community because it can be so authentic and genuine. But then what does the revenue model look like overall? Yeah, so long term, the reason why we've got investment and the reason why investors are excited about um, us and actually others in the space um, is because long term, the business stacks up, okay? Um, 
What's really interesting, what is maybe short-sighted about some other projects um, is that they think about Web3 um, and they think about their mint and secondary um, sales and they think that's where the business is. Um, we think a lot bigger than that. You know, we are very, very ambitious. We um, are going to become an entertainment giant of the future. You know, that's what we are all you know, waking up every morning and, and doing, um, working towards that goal. Um, what you begin to realize is that actually the Web3 bit, making money from Web3 is not the truth for the end goal. The, you know, uh, a- actually the entertainment model that has been here for decades, commercial model, will be true for us in the end. Um, just as much as it it is for traditional entertainment companies. And the question is why? Well, basically, right in the heart of our model um, is ownership. Um, And ownership is important to people. But when you think about it, it's not that we're trying to make money out of ownership. What we're doing is we're building an audience out of ownership. Um, Fox spoke about the ideology is here to stay. There is a movement here People are staying and staying in a bear market, you know, and it's because there's something else going on here. Um, And so right in the heart is ownership and people coming to our world because they want to belong to fates. Um, When you go beyond that, the other things on our roadmap, the reason why they're there, music, books, films, merchandise, is because that's where long term an audience that is wider than Web3, the heart of it is Web3, but the mass audience is wider than Web3, you make money there. Um, If you look at at the best entertainment brands, the top entertainment brands, it's amazing. They, they, like Winnie the Pooh, Marvel, um, they make like 50% of all of their their revenues out of merchandise. Um, There's then a huge like 20% out of films masses um, out of gaming, of course, right? And so um, what I'm saying to you is, uh, and hopefully it's a bit of a comfort for people on this call, um, is that over the next, over the kind of short and medium term, you won't see us trying to make money uh, out of um, Web3 NFTs, right? You'll see us wanting you to come into our world um, and we want you to enjoy our world and feel a sense of belonging because we know if you're here, Um, others uh, will want to be a part of it too. And when you have a big audience, you have an entertainment business. And so I hope that helps. Um, um, But that's that's, uh, the the big vision for it um, in terms of a revenue model over the long term. I think Val's uh, in the chat. Yeah, I can see you in the chat, Val. (laughs) Listen, I am busy here, okay? No, I'm checking everybody for questions. There's a couple, you know, that are coming through. I feel some of them are, and you're welcome, RC. Um, I caught your question three times. Um, So, you know, I feel like what people are really looking for an understanding of is kind of what's next. I know uh, some people are asking about um, how the drops are going to work. you know, there's always the when whitelist question. Um, I can say that we are going to be announcing what pilot protocol looks like in the next few days. So if you're asking that question in any of the chats, um, hang on to it because it's coming soon. Um, and uh, yes, um, there are a couple of comments here about engaging audience around ownership for monetization down the line and how exactly that that ties into this grander sense of community that you're building which um, if anybody wants to speak to that briefly, um, because community has been such a huge focus of what is happening here at Fates. Um, And this community is incredibly strong and incredibly engaged um, and really just an authentic group of people. Um, And I guess if you could just speak briefly to um, what you see the role overall of community being and how that maybe has inspired some of the decisions that you're making um, some of the some of the things on your roadmap, for instance, seem like they're really community driven. Yeah, I think you know, um, 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 forgive us. We do talk a lot through blue skies on these AMAs, so, you know, and um, I'd love to get into the the gritty of 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 a lot of the things that we do on the day to day level. But 
to talk a little bit blue sky again um i i think we said it in our about video we are trying to cultivate a feeling of belonging um and i think that belonging isn't just about ownership it's actually about you know um shared advocacy for a brand and i've been part of so so many brands that i like adore and that you know i've struck up conversations with people about who i don't even know because i know that we have something in common because we're sharing the same piece of merch or we've got the same patch on our bag like these things are really really important and i think that cultivating that feeling of belonging is absolutely our priority uh you know above many other things as mark mentions in our last um question you know our focus right now is is not is not on generating revenues it's on generating a you know unanimously loved brand and a unanimously loved ip that people really want to contribute to um i mean um yeah i don't know if mark if you've got anything to add to that but no i, th I think we've really like you've said it and in, in the um previous question i i really felt i touched on it um as as well um it is the the heart of it i mean when when we even spoke about revenue model right at the heart is that sense of belonging and that community and everything um, spawns out from that um you know I, i've been kind of taught very much traditionally and and you know something that has always been i've always been told is if you get a hundred people to love uh what you do you can get a thousand if you can get a thousand people to love what you do you can get a hundred thousand if you get a hundred thousand people to love what you do you can get get a million but it always starts with a hundred right and already this community I, I i we've been in it you know uh for the last two weeks and and it's wonderful because i know we're beyond a hundred um we we were talking about the transceiver earlier and yesterday matt hyde gave us the the data matt's always our data person he doesn't tend to speak up so much on these amas but he's the one who actually gets stuff done you know and uh fox and i uh create create all of the like oh we'll do this we'll do that and then then matt matt is always delivering so you, you can thank matt for all of the the delivery and stuff anyway we're asking him for um the stats yesterday and we had a thousand people who'd cracked the transceiver so not just played with the transceiver but actually done it and all the way through and then then cracked it um in the first in the first day um and so we know we've got a thousand and then the next day so it was only another 24 hours later we, we were chatting before this call hanging on here we're like hey matt how many people have cracked the transceiver now bear in mind yesterday morning it was a thousand and he goes oh it's 2018 and so we're like okay so we've you know in the last two weeks not only have we formed a a, a, a you know a, a group here but we've actually got people playing with a a, a small game that we've made a little puzzle and and two thousand people have have gone through and actually cracked it so um, you can see where we're going with that. Um, I've answered that question a lot longer than I was expecting to, but you get my point now. Yes. I love that you were like, no, I have nothing to add. I will now add a novel. Um, I know. <laughs> what, what, what was I doing right there? I just suddenly thought of myself and I was like, okay, yeah, I, need, I need to get back into this AMA. Right over to you, Belle. No, I love it. That was great. Um, that was absolutely wonderful. Um, you know, I know that we touched upon this in the first AMA. Some folks that weren't there, and I think that we've had a lot of people who've joined our server recently, likely because of the transceiver, which I think is a really beautiful thing, that there was this moment of engagement that got so many people to join. Um, but a lot of people don't really know some of these some of these pieces. And aside from the Star Wars cantina, they'd like to know um, what some of your inspirations are for um, the way that you've designed this this world, um, the art design, and, you know, including if there are projects in this space that you feel are similar beacons for the type of worlds that you're trying to build. We're just trying to get an idea of, like, where your eyes wander to. Yeah, it's a very, very good question. Um, I have my own personal, like, inspiration points. Um, I think that, you know, when you look at the works of like Miyazaki and, and the works of like, you know, um, you know, if you've seen Spirited Away, you know how much the characters of those films of, you know, of, of Ponyo, uh, Ponyo and of, of Spirited Away, of Brave of the Fireflies, like how much these characters become icons, uh, so much so that they're represented so deeply by the community that loves them. You know, this is a really, really important, um, you know, like, you know, brand to recognize. It's a very archaic one. You know, they haven't even moved to 3D yet. They're still using traditional methods. But what I love about what they've been able to do is cultivate a a culture and uh, and a culture of storytelling. And I think it's a really, really important one. 
in the Web3 space, I recognize a lot of good intentions. Um, and, you know, something that me and Mark observed very, very early, and it's something that we really want to, you know, make sure that people know about us, is that we have our sights set on the stars, you know, as much as any other Web3 project out there. But what was more important to us is to make sure that we keep our feet on the ground and we deliver products that we can deliver at the team size that we are now, that we can deliver that the team size we're going to be in a year's time and two years time and five years time. A lot of the projects we've seen that I love, and I sit there and I read through their law and I go through all their wikis and I read their white papers or I, I go through their, you know, their websites and I find out who designed them are amazing projects, but I can't help but suspend my disbelief of like, but where's the team to build this? You're going to need 170, 180 people, uh, primarily made up of devs. And these are difficulties that we've had, you know, hiring is really hard and it's a really difficult thing. And when I look at some of these projects, I'm like, I wish I could just suspend my disbelief for long enough to believe that this was going to be the next big franchise. Um, and with lots of them, I can't. There's no single product I can point a finger at that has the same ambition as us. The, um, I, I don't mean that to sound big headed. I just mean that in terms of like, you know, the actual technical reality of the place they're in is that, you know, they need to scale really fast and they need to, you know, start building products. And the problem is with building products, especially at the scale that they want to build them, is that it's going to take years. And when you really get into building products, you go quiet because you can't, you can't do lots of things at once. It's really hard. Um, so, but there is plenty of ones in this space that I really, really respect. I tend to respect projects in this space that are doing amazing jobs with their world building. I really like Zeke. Um, we, we talk about Zeke a lot internally um, over at Fringe Drifters. Uh, small project, but my God, they have great law. They have shipped products in the past. They understand the scope of their own product. They are making a film. Um, and uh, they've made films before. They've made a film before. They shipped it. I watched it. Um, I love it. It's a great film. It's got a beautiful art direction. I think I think the guys over at French Drifters are doing a really good thing, despite being a very small project and, and you know, and not very renowned. But to me, that doesn't matter because to me, I'm inspired by what they're doing and I'm inspired by their law. Um, other projects out there, I follow quite a few. Uh, some of them I've fallen away from for aforementioned reasons of, of just feeling like they were over promising on their on their roadmap side. Um, Mark, I don't know if you've got any in mind that you uh, that you want to pick up on. Yeah, I mean, I'll do my usual thing. I'll say I have nothing to add, and then I'll talk for ten minutes. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, there, there are quite a few projects that I mean, I, I think are you know wonderful out there. I know some people are very um, very attached to them, so I don't I don't want to shout out some that um, I, I kind of know. There's kind of a, almost a tribalism around some some projects, but. I mean, I don't know whether you mentioned M MV3, but we, we really respect MV3. It's a wonderful project, um, you know, and it's kind of going down the same um, route of, you know, world building and, you know, the love for, lo we love their core characters idea and things like that. We are, we are different in how we're doing it. You can see we are, um, but, you know, there's a respect for that. I really love the Fringe Drifters project too. You know, I, I think that we, we talk about entertainment and, uh, you know, they are singular focused on film, you know, and, and in a big way. Um, and, you know, and, and it's that, I think similar to Fox, I get frustrated when I see a project that just goes, oh, well, we're going to make a, uh, an MMO and, and we're all looking at it and, you know, you don't have, everyone knows how hard it is to make an MMO. So please don't promise one. Um, uh, and, and, and if you are, you know, you need to make sure you're like Gabe from Limit Break and you've got like $200 million and he's not making an MMO. He's doing something very different. But, you know, I, I think, you know, you've got to be serious around that. And, and if you're a small team, you shouldn't, you shouldn't really be promising that, which is why today we're showing you our 2022, 2023 roadmap and the things that are in flight, you know, um, everything on there you know, has a percentage to it of already being in production, already funded and things. So um, that's what, that's how we roll. Um, we have ambitions, but we don't want to hype you up about, you know, where that is, um, you know, until we've got uh, further through our 2022, 23 roadmap. So yeah, um, over to you, Belle, if there's an, maybe another, another final question or however there many we can do. This is our final question. For everybody who's hanging in there at one o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, our community is unbelievably dedicated and we love you for it. 
So I figured I'd save the last question for the one that I think a lot of people want to know about. Um, and this question has been asked a few times. Um, so I apologize if it seemed like I was ignoring you. I promise you I wasn't. Uh, the question is if we can get some kind of clarification about what the NFTs themselves are going to look like. I'm going to just choose con imperators. I'm going to mess that up. So just know I love you anyway. Um, their question is, if it's something that you're able to share, are the NFTs themselves going to be unique, generative, or will all the NFTs have one standard look? And if there's anything that you can give us as like a little tidbit, just a little bit of help about what we're going to be seeing when these amazing NFTs come out, because everybody's getting three, which is huge. So just a little bit of info would be great. Yes. Okay. I'm going to be very careful with my words here. So, <laughs> Mark, I'm going, to, I'm going to need you on standby to basically just start pumping white noise in if I start saying too much. Um, we absolutely can't offer a visual sneak peek of what these characters look like, but I can talk about um, the way they've been architected. Um, and the architecture and the thought that went into that architecture of the way that the, the characters are. Um, was from day one we recognized that the nfts in the space the ownership we talk about desperately needed utility to be valid um utility is so important to us and therefore we started with the analogy of saying you know how can we make sure that these assets and these characters um don't need a tremendous amount of work to be used in the things that we plan to use them for. As you can tell, I'm speaking slowly because I'm being very careful with my words. Okay. Um, but what we recognize is there was a lot of players in the space who have ambitions that are, are akin to us, um, but we go, okay, well, I've seen the generative assets you have. I've seen all these other assets you have. They, they look great. Um, where's your pipeline to get this into your aforementioned game? Um, we didn't want to have that problem. We didn't want to have the problem of saying, how do we get this into that? Um, we wanted to start with that as our solution and say, here is this, now we can do that, that, and that. Um, and when you look at our roadmap, you can see uh, what we're doing there. Um, yeah, so I think that's I'm... all I'm willing to talk about. But yes, I think the, 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 the only thing I'm going to say is that there's been a lot of thought that's gone into what this initial um, mint means to us and how we plan to create utility from it is is absolutely foundational to the way that we're going to move forward yeah and i think um you know like fox says it really is not going to be too long before you're going to um to get your sneak peeks i will i will mention again we've been working on this for a year so we have been working on the three items uh that we know are central we keep talking about the sense of belonging is so important so the characters, the destination of where you're going in the solar system uh, and the pod have been in design and build for a year, um, along with everything else. But they are so precious to us um, and they are so important to you um, that we didn't want to launch this community until actually it wouldn't be too long before we go, cool, we can start showing you. And it is not far away. Like Fox says, we will not give too much away. But let's put it this way. We haven't seen anyone do in the space what we're going to do. Um, they are able to go straight into other places uh, on our roadmap. Um, and, and that is special. Um, and, uh, and you'll get what we mean when we start showing them to you because they are, they are um, uh, uh, kind of architected in such a way that we don't just create something and then worry about the problem of bringing them into game and uh, other places later. Um, we're strategic. So we've made them uh, ready um, so that they can, they can go into places. So again, I, I'm speaking slowly and being careful because they're so precious, they're so dear and, and they're so important to you. And, and we, we don't want to actually give too much away until they are ready for you to have a tease of them. So we'll stop talking there, Belle. White noise, white noise, white noise. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that that answers the question fairly well. I feel like people are looking like they're very excited, except for Charasan, who um, is giving us what is essentially just, I feel like I'm looking at Apollo 13. I don't know why you did that to me. Um, but 
the chat seems like they're really excited. Um, I feel like we got to most of the questions today. Um, some of you, your questions were specifically related to things that are coming out very, very soon. So please stay tuned. Um, keep an eye on the announcements and Bulletin's channel. Um, and uh, amazing founders, if there's anything you want to say before we sign off, please feel free. Um, uh, again, I'd love to thank people to, for being here. Um, it's awesome just to see everyone in this chat just reacting and talking to us. You know, we are, we, we are, we'll, and we, we are, and we will continue, continue to be always open with our community about what we're doing and how we're doing it in a way that obviously is strategic to us as well. Um, and I did see one question that I'm not going to answer, but I'm going to talk about a little bit, which was just that, you know, I saw a couple of questions around problems, you know, what problems have you had? Um, I think it's really important to address this as a, as a question. Um, we do have problems. We, we are a business. We, we firefight. We have all these different things that we worry about on a day to day basis. And they are cultural. They're um, product centric. Like these issues crop up. But I think as a team, we have the confidence and the kind of know how to know how to navigate those problems. Um, but it's certainly you know, it's easy to come on these AMAs and to kind of explain to people that everything's blue skies and we're, we're, you know, everything's perfect. But the truth is, is that we work, everyone in the team, including yourself, Bell, I know, we all work really hard to overcome those problems. Um, and we will continue to work hard with the community to overcome those problems too. Um, but, you know, there are days when you wake up and you're like, oh my God, I have to firefight today and it's not going to be an easy day. But that's just, you know, that's the robustness that we've built over the last eight years of working together, uh, Mark and uh, Matt. Um, and I think it's, you know, what we're primed to do. Yeah, I, I really echo that, Fox. I, I think um, I'm always worried if you go through a week and you go, oh, I, you know, no one's mentioning any problems or, or this and this. I think it's just part of humanity is that we wake up and we have to solve stuff. And so, um, yeah, I totally, I totally, um, totally support that. And I think, I mean, Fox and I, for example, you know, the last few weeks have they've been really hard. You know, there's some really hard stuff. But whenever we go on our walks and stuff, there's, I mean, we've been working together for seven years, so we're, we're quite used to facing problems and stuff. Um, but you come together and you go, well, it's all just too important, isn't it? So we're just going to keep working hard and, and, and get through it. And, and it's an absolute joy when you get those moments where you look at something and go, my goodness it's either beautiful or it's it's now architected wonderfully the game's humming the and you've just come through all of that pain and i personally i just absolutely love that and uh they're few and far between those moments of absolute joy where you see you know something uh that you had in your vision actually come together um but it's kind of become an obsession of the founders on here to make sure we achieve that and by God, by God, we have to go through a lot of trials and tribulations to get there, but um, you'll receive that <laughs> and it won't be long. So yeah, an Echo Fox, thank you. It's, uh, it's an abs it, it supercharges us to talk to you and see you here. It, it gives us so much energy. It fills our batteries. So it's why we keep coming back and doing more of these AMAs because uh, yeah, it's like our fuel. <laughs> so I think we'll leave it there, Bell. Yeah, no, that's great. I, this is a wonderful team. It's a joy to work with you all, despite the eight-hour time difference. You all are utterly amazing. Um, uh, and this community is beautiful. You all have sat here, and some of you I know are here at 5 o'clock in the morning right now. So thank you so much for taking the time. Um, if you have any other questions about anything that you've seen, or we didn't get to your question, um, feel free to just, um, just let your team know. We're here to support you. Um, and if there are any issues, you know, reach out. Open a ticket. We're, we're super into this whole community building thing in case you hadn't noticed. Um, and our, your founders will be around again soon. So um, look out for some great announcements coming up in the next couple days. And, um, oh, for um, also zero, I'm sorry you forgot your question. I can't help you with that. Um, so for those of you who are interested, um, we have a couple of fun things coming up soon. So I'm just gonna let you know while we're here. Um, fun thing number one, that's actually what everybody wants to know is pilot protocol is going to be released in the next within the next week. You're going to learn how you can become a pilot in this in this program. And that's I think what all of you are waiting for. So please stand by. Don't panic. Get excited. We're going to release that very soon. And the other thing is um, for those of you who've participated in our incredible first transceiver puzzle, which from I understand is like 
over 2000 people, which is just insane. Um, I know you're all waiting to hear whether or not you've won a frontier role in the raffle that will be happening on Sunday. So we will be announcing the time for that very soon. So just keep ahead, keep your heads up, know that we're coming on Sunday. It's going to be great. Um, and the new, there will be some new puzzles coming out for you starting next week and they will be more challenging, more fun and a lot more immersive. You're going to get a lot more out of this. I think you guys are really going to love it. Yes. Woohoo. New puzzles. You're going to love what is coming for you. So stand by and, um, thanks again for coming. Uh, I feel like y'all have been here long enough. Have a great night day and, uh, thanks for being beautiful people. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Thank Bye you. Bye.